You're listening to Staying in the Game, a Plum Dragon Herbs podcast where we have conversations about mindset and techniques for staying at the top of your game. I'm your host, Janelle Leatherwood. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Eric Allen and Kyle Mahadio, lifelong martial artists and co-owners of Budo Brothers, a martial arts lifestyle company. Hey guys, welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you could join me today. We're awesome. glad to be here. We're so glad to be on your show. Yeah, it's been a long time coming that we've been planning this, and we're really excited to have you guys tonight. And if you guys could just take a minute and introduce yourselves to the guests, that would be fantastic. Perfect. Well, my name's Eric Allen, and I'm Kyle. And if you want to know by the pictures and everything you see on Instagram, Kyle's the dark one, Eric's the light one. <laughs> We're the Yippie gang, which composes and com- makes up Budo Brothers. That's right. That's awesome. How did you guys meet? So, yeah, actually, Eric and I didn't really know each other that well in university, but uh, we kind of both had a passion for martial arts and entrepreneurship and, you know, just kind of went on a trip one time to Montreal. Somebody canceled out and we ended up going and ended up having an amazing time and figured out we definitely have to start a business together. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. Both were involved in prior startups and had a mutual respect for each other, knowing that, you know what? He, they're both. You're brave enough to start a business. You're, you're probably brave enough to go down another uncharted territory when you go down the land of starting a new business where there's nothing but unknowns. You want to go down that path with people that have gone through that before because it's uncharted territory. Yeah, absolutely. So what was the first aspect of your business that you guys threw together? It's funny. We actually started, we started training together. We're both lifetime martial artists and we started training at the same dojo. And for about a year or two, we were training together. And one day on the mats, Kyle came up to me. He was like, you know what? We should really start a brand. And yeah, and I kind of, I kind of wanted to be extravagant. Are you guys familiar with the the brand Lululemon? It's a Canadian brand. Yes, I am. Uh huh. My idea was to be a the Lululemon of martial arts and have everybody in these like amazing posh gis. But, you know, uh, Eric put some rules on the kind of uh, the arrangement. The startup capital, see, w- the position that I, we were both in actually, uh, were, I was coming off of a pretty big failure of a, another startup that I had started that completely blew up, shrapnel everywhere, and I went flat broke. So I was lick, lick, licking my wounds. Mm-hmm. And here Kyle is proposing I get involved, go for a round two of punishment. I'm like, I got to, I got really good at losing money and I want to stop losing money. So let's put a cap on this venture. So if mm-hmm. we're going to do this, we're going to do this with a thousand dollars in startup capital. So 500 from me, 500 from Kyle. And if we can't make a go of it, at least we learned something. And our number one objective, we both wanted to learn e-commerce. So we came at this from a place of wanting to learn and mm-hmm. it was we weren't motivated to we literally just wanted to gain this skill set of ha- having the ability to monetize products online because in today's day and age that's a valuable skill set to have so with a thousand bucks we had to get pretty creative and we couldn't be a lululemon because that might get us a sample right. yeah and you know Uh, we don't really have any major skill sets or anything when it came to e-commerce. We had to learn everything on the fly, the marketing, the sales, the website, uh, everything that a small business owner who wants to stay relevant in the internet age needs to have in their arsenal. And it's such valuable skill sets, but we actually had to get so creative that we started off with a, uh, a weapon in our martial art. It's called a Hanbo. Um, it's just a, a three foot dowel. So it was, it was pretty hard to, to, create something that was uh, providing value for people and people wanted around on the uh, to buy off the internet with just a, 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 a literally a, a three foot dowel it's mm-hmm. okay it's a three foot stick I mean you can find it at Rona <laughs> <laughs> no no ours, ours are a bit more cool we have the better woods we, we put a lot of work into them but yes it's funny we actually so starting we found a, a woodworker uh, actually locally that was very talented and brought in all these exotic woods and we thought that might be a great place to start. So let's create a line of ultra premium hondles, the top quality taken care of. Literally Kyle and I spent so many nights 
sanding sticks and I, I'm pretty sure I developed early arthritis <laughs> <laughs> and, and we treated the, we treated the launch of these sticks like it was an apple launch we put so much meticulous work into everything the marketing this like it was it was really incredible what we did the effort we put into putting a stick onto the market wow did you guys make each one yourselves they were handmade they're ha- they're hand finished or hand finished uh, yeah, yeah. So That's we have our, our woodworker that was the original uh, sourcer of all the materials. He would g- give us the raw and then we would put our logo on it, polish them up, sand them, oil them, finish them, package them, and then send them to the customer. That is amazing. How many did you do for your first run? So for our first run, given that we only had a $1,000 startup capital, we spent $200 on our logo. <laughs> so we had 800 bucks left minus another 100 bucks in setting up the website and a couple other incidentals. And so we really only had – I mean when we placed our first order, it was about five, 600 bucks worth of sticks. Mm-hmm. And this is the point where we said, you know what? This is the make or break, right? Can we put a check? mark next to the box saying that we sold a product online to somebody that we didn't know. And at this point of the business, we were just putting something online and hoping that the the bell dung and we actually converted somebody. In fact, Eric made a stupid prank on me. Uh, he uh, he <laughs> was like, oh, dude, I think we'll get a sale today. I just feel it. And I'm like, oh, man, I don't think so. And then he went and he talked to his buddy and bought one online. And I'm sitting there jacked, like, selling in, like, popping champagne, like, dancing. And he's like, dude, that was me. Oh, man, that's he's funny. Like, we did it. We did it. I'm like, yeah, we did it. <laughs> oh, eventually, gosh. Eventually, we did start getting sales. And Absolutely. eventually – People started buying these online, and it allowed us to move to the next level. And what what is that? Tell us more about that. Well, so once we – this is really crazy because if, if somebody put a business plan on my desk that said, I'm going to sell three-foot sticks on the internet <laughs> and create a brand that – ends up having customers all over the globe, I would tell them to get out of my office. And this is just the beautiful part. When you come at it from a place of wanting to learn and wanting to grow and wanting to serve, it's amazing the rocks that you uncover because you're not looking at it from a, we did not come at this saying, we're going to be a global brand. We're going to be this. We're, and it's about us. It's about us. No, we wanted to come up with a way. Yes, we wanted to learn and we looked at it from that valence, but we also wanted to really look at how we could serve. And when we started selling sticks on the internet, we actually uncovered a massively underserved niche. So we took that 1000 bucks, turned it into two, two into four, four into eight, eight into 16, and just reinvested every dollar back into the business. And Mm -hmm. it allowed us to spin off a lifestyle brand around it. So we moved from these physical weapons, which is so niche to one specific style, and we decided to be very style agnostic. That's one thing about Budo Brothers. It's a style agnostic brand. It's because in martial arts, it's a little bit like religion. Like my style is better than your style. Yours, and, the, and people, you can even see it in the comments of every post, people argue all the time. And we're not about that. We're about connecting and inspiring all martial arts. And celebrating right. martial arts. Because every art has something to teach us. Mm-hmm. But only to the students that are willing to learn and you cannot learn that what you are think you already know and that's what's so cool about the the journey that we've been on we've been able this whole crazy wild ride has taken us to meet some incredible martial artists that have really opened up our eyes and helped us tap into mindset and really tapping into the true principles and virtues of martial arts that has the power to change lives. And that actually set us on our next journey, which was to really empower the next generation and Since day one, we always wanted to have a strong social cause. We wanted to have a strong why. Sure, we wanted to learn. And once we learned, we said, wow, we actually have some power here. There's something here. Let's use this as a vehicle to do good, to to spread good in the world through the lens of martial arts. And that actually helped. We started a nonprofit. So since day one, we've been supporting and helping subsidize martial arts for 
kids in our local city. But once we saw the power of that, we saw how these young minds completely changed. We wanted to scale that up. So we actually carved out a physical separate entity called the Budo Youth Fund. And today we've helped 44 kids gain access to martial arts that otherwise wouldn't get a chance. We essentially provide grant funding for underprivileged youth that otherwise wouldn't get a shot. And it's pretty cool the way the, the grant and the fund works is uh, we use our social channels yeah. and we an application North America wide and people apply online and we go through and we look at all the applications and we find the most deserving people and then we use their grant funding in order to fund the full year of martial arts for every kid. Oh, that's so great. Yeah, I love the Budo Youth Fund that you guys have created. So it's did, stuff. Yeah. It's, when did you guys get into martial arts? Was it in your youth? Uh, for me, I started when I was six. Mm -hmm. I started I was five years old and I got to tell you, I mean, we both having that martial arts background, we both feel like that really set us up to propel and reach and tap into our greatest potential. Now, I mean, I'm not an academic. I just know how to work hard. And the fact that I was even able to go to university and get an engineering degree is crazy. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't understand the virtues of perseverance, working hard, overcoming challenges, digging down, digging deep, figuring out what you're made of and laying it all out on the battlefield. And that's really taken my learnings from martial arts and plugging that into my everyday life has really allowed me to excel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, my son right now, he's eight, he's, he's wanting to get into martial arts. So I'm glad to hear, you know, that doesn't sound like it's too late to start. Not at all. Absolutely yeah. Not. I mean, even adults are, you know, you can start really anytime with martial arts. Definitely. And I think some of the best learnings are actually most applicable to Results. Some of the biggest things I gleaned off of is self-respect and, and confidence. I mean, how many times are you in a meeting or you want to say something to a person and you just kind of shy away because, you know, you're lacking a little bit of like self-belief, self-confidence, self-respect. Like one of the one of the best things I learned through martial arts is the ability to be confident in yourself. And, and when you are that it almost it emanates right and more opportunities and and you know that's so powerful not only for kids but for adults in boardrooms and workplaces in negative situations it, it's really really beneficial mm -hmm. yeah what are um some stories that you could share of those who have been recipients of the budo youth fund have you gotten some good feedback from the yeah, recipients definitely so i think one of the one of the uh the i guess we, we also did a uh, program uh, at the Jackson Wink Academy. So Jackson Wink, he is – the academy there, uh, they train some of the top MMA fighters in the world, John Bones, Holly Holmes, Michelle Watterson. Um, we met Michelle Watterson and she introduced us to this program and we kind of talked to the owners of the program, um, Mike and Heather. And um, what they do is they help special needs kids um, down in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was it was a cool program because we got to go down there and, and film and, and to see kind of what was going on there. So you could check it out on our social media platforms. But uh, what we did is we helped fund the uh, instructors there and allow for them to teach these kids because it's actually they don't uh, – the people involved in the program needed so much they don't even have capital to pay anything for the program. Mm -hmm. So it was super rewarding to see – what it does uh, for those kids and just like how much fun they have. I think that was one of the biggest things, the smiles and the laughter and the pure joy that you see when they're participating in that stuff. It's, it's worth it. And that's one of the biggest driving forces that we have going forward to continue the fun and to continue to grow. I think another one that stands out for me, we were blessed to be in a position to sponsor an entire family. Uh, this family trained together uh, as a family. So uh, dad, mom, th three kids, you know, they all trained together. And unfortunately, the, the father passed away and they all had to stop training. Mm. Uh, just financial situation. Uh, he was the breadwinner. And so they had to all quit. And we got word of this uh, after we started spreading the word about our youth fund and us really wanting to make an impact in the lives that could really use it the most. And what we try to do is find those 
those families that, you know what, they're just down on their luck. You know, something's come up and it's not because they just want to spend the money on a new iPhone and get free martial arts training for their kids. There's a real reason, you know, there's, and there's a real desire on the kids that there's a calling. There's something that is driving them towards martial arts and finances shouldn't get in the way of those when it, there's such life-changing benefits that martial arts can provide these kids and these families. And so for us to be able to help sponsor that entire family and get them back on the mats was hands down the most rewarding work that we've done. And that's why we really want to continue this journey. Oh, that is so great. Now, what about you guys? Like, have you had any setbacks in life where you feel like, you know, you, you really had to persevere and can you share one of those stories with us? I'm going to be pretty honest. Like I, I feel I've been pretty blessed in this life. I mean, I, I hear a lot of the, the struggles and the turmoil and, and everything that's out there. And like, I come from a great family, great background. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I can't really say that I've had too many challenges that a normal person wouldn't face when it comes to business. We've had a ton of challenges, but I, I believe that's, that's, uh, one of the, uh, the, just the elements of business that you can't get around. But, um, one thing that we really try to do is to switch kind of that mentality behind that to more gratitude based stuff. Yeah. For me, I mean, the funny thing is, is that oftentimes the the challenges that we face, a lot of the times they're internal. They're, they're a battle that are, is going on with ourselves, is whether it's, you know, us beating ourselves up because of something. And, and I yeah. had an incident like that where I had always identified as an entrepreneur and I, I was going to be this big mogul who's going to go take over the world and provide value, do all this fun stuff and be that wildcat entrepreneur. And I had always had a big boy job uh, with at my engineering degree, getting out there, uh, learning, but I always had side hustles. And a lot of these side hustles, some of them would work and some of them wouldn't. And mm-hmm. A lot of the time, I convinced myself that, you know what, I think a lot is what, what's causing these to not work is that it's a side hustle. And a side hustle is only always going to remain a side hustle until you get both feet into the boat. And so I decided that I ran out of excuses. I had a very cushy engineering job where I was on autopilot making great money. I was no longer challenged. And I had this incredible venture that I loved. I wanted to go all in on because it was an area that I was passionate about and I wanted to go all in. And so I submitted my resignation mm-hmm. uh, on the 1st of 2014. Wow. Now we're based of Calgary, Alberta, which is a very oil based economy. And so this was right before the big oil crash. Mm-hmm. And I had saved up a year's worth of capital to get, allow myself a cushion to live a comfortable lifestyle while I got this whole entrepreneur thing under my belt. And the problem was that most of that savings was in oil stocks because that's what I knew. And of course, I'm going to be investing in the companies that I'm working with because I know their operations. And so I was very confident that I was making these right decisions and I had nothing to lose. So I, I went and submitted my resignation and went all in and said, I'm going to make a go of it. Now, the problem was when when oil crashed, so did my savings. So that year's worth of capital turned into six months and six months came real quick. And I went flat broke. So at the ripe age of 30, I literally had to, I lost everything. I I had to cash out my RSPs. Wow. Uh, was eating Costco hot dogs. And I mean, bless my family. They're so supportive. And I knew that if it ever got real bad, I could always move in with them. And it's so funny. Every Sunday dinner, they'd cook extra food because they knew I was going through hard times. Mm-hmm. But I love the fact that they also knew that these hard times are going to teach me a lot. Yeah. And, and I can tell you, this experience where I beat myself up And that's exactly what happened. It was a fight that I was fighting with myself because I was supposed to be this entrepreneur that was going to go take over the world and 
nothing can stop me. And what happened? I was, how, how, how did this not work? And I, I shouldn't have done this. And then remorse hit it in uh, regret. I, why did I leave my job? All my colleagues are enjoying this big salary. And here I am. I can't even buy food. And I, I literally spent every day fighting myself, regret living in the past, thinking, replaying situations over and over and over again to the point where I wasn't living life. I was in my head and that did not allow me to get out of that situation. And it wasn't until I hit complete rock bottom where one day I wasn't sleeping. I I was exhausted. I had, I had to actually do something one day. And so I I got out of bed and I remember I, I was in the shower and I was just completely exhausted and I put my I leaned up against the the wall and was just I had my arm on my head and just like oh this feeling of loathing I was like I have to go face the day like for the first time in my life I was really depressed Mm -hmm. and I remember this feeling of completely giving up I actually think I I collapsed I completely collapsed and I have no idea how long I was out all I remember is waking up to water hitting my face and then the fruit one moment all I felt was air filling my lungs <gasps> and then I could feel my heart beat and I was I had no idea I, it was the craziest experience it was so almost indescribable but for the first time in probably three months all I was doing was being present. All I was doing was breathing. All I was doing was feeling water hit my face. I wasn't worrying about the future. I wasn't regretting the past. I was just being and I rem- I was reminded that I'm alive. And I just started hitting myself with an affirmation. I am powerful. And that, you know what? It was crazy. I got out of the shower that day and I tell you, I noticed that the sun was shining. And you know what the sun was shining? Yes, the day before I didn't see it, and there I was enjoying a cup of tea on my couch in my condo, and I'm the one with the problem. Mm-hmm. I and it just snapped me out of it. I realized all of the things that, and just that morning, all I did was list out all the things that I was grateful for: my family, my friends, this this beautiful country that we live in, the ability to walk outside and breathe fresh air without poisoning your body, living in a country with the rule of law. Like, wow, there are some, there is some serious suffering on the planet, and I'm not suffering. That's all internal. And that totally shifted my mindset. That right. completely changed my reality. And then it started going upwards. So from there, it was a slow – my highs got high, higher and my lows got higher. It was a stock chart that was going up and to the right. And since then, it allowed me to get back and get in touch with who I really am – which isn't tied up with some identity of some label of what other people think I should be Mm -hmm. me being who I am and not caring what other people think. And that allowed me to tap into that potential, that authenticity and that, that changed my life. And, and since then I've just been operating as me, as that being of who I am. And to me that changed my life. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, how soon after you had that, I'll call it an epiphany, or did you meet Kyle? It was literally since starting Budo Brothers, that instance where I feel like I hit rock bottom, it couldn't have been more than three months after that. Wow. If I was in the mindset that I was in, I would have told Kyle that was a dumb idea. Hey, you know what, man, I got to go get a job. Just don't, don't waste. What, what do you want to do? No, we can't do that. Cause that's the mindset that I would have been in. I wouldn't have been thinking opportunity. I would have been thinking scarcity. And if somebody came to me and said, Hey, here's an opportunity. I would have looked at it from a scarce mindset and would have killed it. And Budo brothers would have never started. If, if we weren't in the mindset of wanting to grow, wanting to serve 
and wanting to start something new and go on a new journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you had placed yourself in that position where you were open to receiving, you know, this idea that Kyle presented to you, but it still took a huge leap of faith. How, How did he convince you? That was pretty convincing. <laughs> you know, no. Honestly, I think we always knew that we wanted to get into uh, something together. And I mean, we, we've had a lot of scars with businesses uh, prior to this. Like we've, we've both done a couple ventures and entrepreneurial things before. And like, you know, when personalities just mix and we're like, man, we really got to try something. And, you know, a lot of people end up following a path maybe for a specific outcome like maybe money or status or something and you said we said like because we did we couldn't see the we couldn't see what we were going to create at the beginning right nobody can and so we said let's follow the passion let's follow what we like to do what we enjoy to do so we can have fun and learn at the same time so that was kind of the the, the talk and and I mean it wasn't really a sell we w- we went to a restaurant we sat down we came up with some stupid names before like ninja guys and like <laughs> like s- stupid things and then all of a sudden we hit oh let's call ourselves Budo Brothers and it was literally like a hush fell and we're like that that's work. the one that could that's work. awesome uh, yeah so in our art uh, that we're we we've spent the last I mean, I've been at the same dojo for the last 10 years. Kyle, you've been at the, you've been training for five. Yeah. Uh, uh, It's the style that we were practicing at the time and are still practicing to this day is is ninjutsu. And budo is actually a Japanese word. Bu means warrior. Do means way. So it's really the way of the warrior and that path that warriors go down, which is often plagued with challenges. Right circumstances that will test you and the true warrior pushes through that because the gift is on the other side and that way of learning through challenge is what budo is all about Mm -hmm. the warrior mindset absolutely yeah so do you mentor others on this warrior mindset we've We've started to be called into that light a little bit more. Um, we recently actually had a talk uh, in Calgary in front of a bunch of um, entrepreneurs. They called us up because we were kind of a new upcoming business in Calgary. And, um, you know, we had to talk about celebrating failure and our failure in order to get towards where we got to today and the, the steps and the tasks and the mindset behind it. So it was a pretty cool talk. It was, it was, a, it was a fun event. And so... We both realize that we do like speaking about those types of things and, you know, in the the ideas and mindsets in martial arts are something that, you know, everybody can learn from, whether you're a mom or, or a, a dad or a business owner downtown or, you know, somebody who's just trying to get through the day of the work or, or whatever. These values that are contained within these ancient, ancient arts are philosophies and principles that everybody can learn and understand. Absolutely. I mean, these these principles and virtues have stood the test of time. We're talking thousands and thousands of years. There's a reason why they haven't gone away. It wasn't a fad. It wasn't just think positively. It, it, was, it was, hey, these have literally been battle tested, and it turns out this works. The importance of having a mindset that mm-hmm. allows you to execute and operate at a high level, because at the end of the day, that's probably the most important thing that we have is our mindset, because that's how we view the world. Mm-hmm. And if your view of the world is skewed or negative, negative yeah. then then guess what? That's real. That is your reality. And so what we forget is that we have the power of choice. As human beings, we can choose to turn left or turn right. That choice is ours. That same power of choice can be put into mindset where you can choose. It takes practice just like martial arts. you got to train. You can choose a winning mindset. And that's really what we see an opportunity to help other people live a more full life. 
Mm-hmm. Enjoy the simple things in life because until we started tapping into this, we were too busy to enjoy these simple things in life. And that it, it has literally changed our lives. Yeah. That's funny. I was talking to my sister about that very same thing today. My sister was like, you know, it's just like we're always thinking, thinking, thinking rather than being present. And we could even be out in nature and not really even noticing or just being present and simply enjoying life. And, you know, it's so true. true. And how do you shut off that mind? Because it's it's so overwhelming. Yeah. One of the one of the most powerful statements that uh, that I heard that everybody's got a trigger and a cue that kind of shocked them into presence. And he's like, uh, it was by uh, a gentleman, Eckhart Tolle. And um, he has this book called The Power of Now. But one of the statements that was the most powerful for me in it was is like, you can't let your mind take control of everything, right? That you have to, to watch it. And he's like, sit there and say to yourself, I wonder what I'm going to think about next. Mm-hmm. And when you start thinking about what you think about next, all of a sudden the noise in your head slows down for a second because you're watching your mind. And for me, that was a trigger to kind of be like, you can actually almost like your mind is a part of the whole thing. It's not the only thing, right? Like you have your mind, your body, your, your spirit, the, the, the trifecta of things, but just sitting there and trying to, Step it's, step outside of the chaos of of the mind for a little totally. bit because yeah. it can take over. And when those thought streams just knock, they they don't stop. One thought leads to another, to another, to another. And wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you're not there because you are. All of that energy is tied up in your head, right? And what I found super powerful is like Kyle was saying was, is being the observer of your thoughts and realize bringing consciousness to your everyday life and watching all of it. Instead of being the emotion you're observing, you are the place where that emotion takes place. Hmm. Yeah. And another crazy thing about emotions too, cause like they work, I find emotions work differently than thoughts, right? And sometimes when you're like really angry, like you're not even thinking at that point, like you're just angry, your body does certain things, right? You get really tense and like what sometimes I try to focus on to, to, to not be too like emotional, like if you're in a really emotional state, like I learned this from a NLP course, neuro linguistic planning course I took a long time ago, is that like try to reverse all of the physical things that your body's currently doing. So if you're like mad and hunched over and really clenched up, try to stand up taller, elongate, open your palms. If you feel tension in the right side, try to imagine it moving to the left side. And like, it's, it's amazing how when you change your physical state, mm-hmm. it change how you feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've since starting Budo brothers, this is what's so cool about the journey is that it's, it's led to connections and stepping stones that lead to other opportunities that bring us in touch with some of the most incredible, powerful minds on the planet. Mm-hmm. And we learn from them and extract their knowledge. And a big part about our company is sharing that knowledge. This is not for us because guess what? This isn't about us. No. This is about the community. And if we can do our best at sharing all of these gifts that we are blessed to come across and share that with the community, share that with the world, that, that is true service. And when you come from a place of service, you can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. It's really funny. Uh, there's a point we actually almost crippled Budo brothers actually, uh, with, uh, one of our product launches. So we had a product, it was called the Cardi. And uh, we normally don't talk about it too much to people because, you know, they don't know unlike our like in our communities of why all of a sudden the car just kind of stopped being sold in our store. But it was a fantastic product. It was brilliantly cut. The material was excellent. So we got really excited about it. And when we both got really excited about it, we said, let's 
go all in on this thing. And we invested all of our capital into the product and we got it manufactured and brought in and we ran into a huge issue. So mm -hmm. we started marketing it and selling it and it went out to our, the, our people and some of our biggest fans and then we got an email back. And Eric actually got the email and he's like, dude, you have to get over here right now. And so I go over there and he shows me the email and the fabric was blue on one side, white on the other. It was reversible. And what would happen is if you'd wash it, which didn't happen in the sample, it would bleed pink. Uh. <laughs> so we just invested all of our capital into this product uh. and 80% had to go to the homeless shelter down the street from us um, because, you know, we couldn't use it. Yeah, it, it literally was a case of quality creep. So once the company, which was overseas, got the order, uh, they used 20% of the material that was originally specced and obviously cut some corners on the other material. And it's not until you have it side by side that you can see the difference. And so Kyle and I spent probably four weekends in a row out of my parents' place. They have two washing machines and we were literally washing the entire batch, finding the ones that wouldn't bleed and sending them to customers that got the duds and mm. kill as we killed absolutely everything. We, we shut it down and we quote unquote sold out really early. Technically we sold out, but just of the ones that worked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But what's so cool is that, I mean, this is a great instance of where like um, you're in the trenches and you're engaged in trench warfare and you couldn't possibly see how this could lead to anything good because you are staring bankruptcy in the face. And while this was going on, we actually forgot that we left our advertisements on. I mean, we were panicking. We dropped everything and we're quickly trying to figure out what the problem was and how we were going to solve it that we forgot to turn off our advertisements. And oh, I wow. A gentleman was actually waiting in line at a restaurant and he was scrolling through his phone and he saw this advertisement for this really cool product and he was like, wow, that's, that's it. Clicked on the link, went to our website and was like, wow, th these guys are doing something special. Like this, they're making martial arts uh, alive and, and, and fresh. And he emailed us and saying, I want to work with you. And now this wasn't just some average Joe. Uh, this guy, his name is Sifu Singh. And the man has literally traveled the world, trained over 150 different elite special forces, military, SWAT, yeah, Secret Service, CIA. It, it, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. And he's trained not only in the art of combat, but also in mindset, how to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations, how to tap into your true potential and reach a state of high performance where you can execute as a high performance human being. And – he reached out to us. We knew nothing about him uh, up to this point, and we we did a we did a deep dive on him. Like, holy, this guy's the real deal. Yeah, he wants to work with us. We had no idea what it was going to be until we started spitballing. And next thing you know, we catch a flight down to California to go shoot a digital seminar with this legend. Wow, it's kind of such a funny learning lesson. Like some of your best. Uh, lessons and successes come from some of the hardest times. Mm -hmm. And so we try to have a model now that when you're in those hard times and in those tough places to, to not get so overwhelmed by it, because if you can look at it and take it for what it is and live in that present moment and be present in that situation and realize if you ride that wave on the other side is something so valuable and precious, it helps dealing with those situations and dealing with those moments and it makes them a lot better when you're in them. Mm -hmm. Totally. And so this actually helped save our company. So we pivoted into digital products, selling online courses with some of the top martial artists on the planet. Sifu Singh being the first martial artist that we pioneered this new model with. So not only did he change our business model and helped us diversify and completely course correct, start cash flowing again, allowing us to continue the work with our nonprofit, continue developing new products, and then also 
diving into this digital world where we can help provide value and share these gifts that these masters have dedicated their lives to attaining such level of mastery that we got to we're the lucky ones that get to go extract this knowledge put it into digital content that can be consumed by anyone all anywhere on the globe and that is so exciting for us because we are obsessed with learning and we're obsessed with sharing the learnings that we get to come across through our journey and this avenue of putting together digital products to help share that knowledge is such an awesome model that we're so thrilled about. And so if it wasn't for this crisis, if it wasn't for us screwing up this oper- this product, we would have never tapped into this new business model and we would have never met Sifu Singh. And we ne- we, so we, how could we not be thankful for the thing that at the time looked like a complete crisis? Right side of it it's a it's an incredible gift so we try to now reach a state of gratitude where no matter what just be thankful be thankful that you're alive you're you get to experience this Mm -hmm. and when people that locks in the gift it speeds up the process and it almost guarantees you that result the result of growth and so that's kind of how we've told we changed our mindset. Yeah, I love that how you guys rose from the ashes and you know, you completely revitalized your business and that is such a great message for our listeners today. And and I love your magazine. I mean, that's a great avenue for you guys to share some of your thoughts and to feature other martial artists who are doing amazing things. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's one of the one of our most enjoyed projects is literally featuring talented martial artists that have an inspiring story to share. And I'm a firm believer. We are a firm believer in that there is something that you can learn from absolutely everyone, even if it is what not to do, you know, or what not to be like. Yeah. You can learn from every being on the planet and we're lucky enough to be able to find the really cool powerful ones and get their story put it into our magazine and share it for free so it's a completely free uh, monthly magazine that goes out straight to folks inbox we feature a new martial artist every month and we use that as an avenue to kind of share what we're doing what cool products we're working on what initiatives we have on the go and it's just a great way to keep in touch with our community and continue to serve and provide value Mm -hmm. yeah i love that i was reading through one of your magazines how you and it sounds like sifu singh went up to calgary to speak at a conference on energy disruptors yeah. And how you talked about, you know, the real energy disruptors are stress, fear, and anxiety. And I, I guess it was Sifu Singh and maybe you guys as well that talked about mindfulness practices. Can you share some of um, practices or other health habits that would be beneficial to work on every day? Yeah, absolutely. And that's, this is where we're so fortunate to have met a, a man like Sifu Singh, who specializes in this, you know, specializes in mindfulness. And I mean, we had dabbled before really getting into Budo Brothers and whatnot, but then we just kept seeing it over and over and over again. And we're like, there's got to be something to this. And learning from a, from a guy like Sifu Singh, who, who teaches, he's got this great, great uh, daily routine where every morning, you, you he calls it arrive before you leave mm, so i love that take time out of your day and dedicate it to yourself dedicate it to arriving being present before you walk out that door and rush to the next meeting and fiddle through your day and be completely overwhelmed by all of the crazy things that life throws at you get yourself centered Get yourself centered. And it's a great, great routine. So essentially what he recommends, and this is what we've been doing, and it works phenomenally, is you know, right when you wake up, first thing you do, crush over a liter of water. Just chug water. You've been you spent the entire night breathing as you're exhaling, you're letting a whole bunch of water. We actually tested this. Weigh yourself before you go to bed, and then weigh yourself right when you wake up. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's when I want to weigh myself, right when I wake <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, yeah. And, and so that's literally where a lot of that, well, all of that is is essentially moisture. You've, you've been exhaling. You know, when you breathe on a window, it fogs it up. That's moisture. That's, that's actual hydration leaving your body. So most of us, what we do as soon as we wake up, we crush coffee and that doesn't necessarily hydrate you. You know, right. kind of the opposite of first. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we wake up, we smash coffee after hitting the snooze button. Uh, and then we, 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 you know, turn first thing we most, most of us do yeah, is go, go on roll social media. stories on Instagram and bed and then you get yep. out. And, and so now you've, you've started your day comparing yourself to other people and wondering why your life sucks. And, yeah. uh, Great, great footing to start off. Starting off late, <laughs> grabbing a donut or yeah. something like super sugar filled. Yeah, but yeah, your fuel is important too, right? So watching what you you eat, and also one of the key things is getting a little bit of a sweat in before you go out. If if you can manage to put the time in, like it takes fifteen minutes, 10, mm-hmm. 15 minutes to break a sweat. You can do squats, burpees, push ups. But just getting your mind and your body ready to attack the day, winning the day before you leave. Because if you're already in a a losing state or a losing mindset before you walk out the door, the day just takes advantage of you. Yeah. Absolutely. And so I, first step. I really wait. think like changing it up too in your routine can really help. Like I, I'm pretty excited today. I did my first bar class. And oh, I just cool. think, yeah. you know. It's, it was so fun to try something completely new and it tests your, you know, your physical ability and your muscles in different ways than it's used to. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. So kind of rounding out this routine, wake up, crush some water, break a sweat. So whether that's just doing some squats, get the body fired up. Uh, it's not easy because you're tired and you don't want to do it. But that is, there's the lesson. Get comfortable in that uncomfortable situation. Push, win that battle because that is that is internal. And if you can overcome that, you're already off to a great start. So you so you woke up, you hydrated, you sweat, the endorphins start pumping. You know, you start your brain starts all these great neuroepinephrine and dopamine. You're you're feeling good. Then after that, take time to meditate and whatever that means to you, whether that's just focusing on your breath or if you have certain techniques that you like to use. Take at least 10 to 15 minutes, sit down, center yourself, breathe, focus on the breath, take that time to just really zero in. And then after that, list off absolutely everything that you're thankful for. Mm-hmm. Once you're done, be switched to gratitude. Think of everything that you're thankful for. Then after that, go crush a, a, a great breakfast uh, and showering now here's the the one that people really hate when you're in the shower switch it to cold <laughs> uh, it's it but the science is there it wakes up the body it stimulates the, the all the different systems in your body it, the lymphatic system your immune system all of these different things you just start firing up and i tell you you will notice a crazy energy spike throughout your day that is that is sustained and you know even myself i not a big fan of cold shower so i kind of do it you know a few seconds on a few seconds off a few seconds on a few seconds on and then i try to leave it on as long as possible but again it's just all these micro wins that you're building up before you even and leave like you're conquering that and you're you're staying in there and you're just achieving something before you go out Mm -hmm. and then i think the last little piece is just kind of try to learn something new you know Mm. Uh, just taking a little second just like the bar class you know how when you went to the bar class yeah it was something new and challenging and inspiring like outside of work and your hustle and just giving the brain something to digest and learn Mm -hmm. because that's what it does it needs fuel so if you keep it creative and keep it flowing with something new it's great we are we're continual students one funny thing about eric and i besides when we're working on products and, and different things like we rarely listen to music or even even the TV that we watch, we usually are trying to consume as much information as possible via podcast, documentary. Um, we're just always trying to jam a lot of information in your head. We find some of the best ways to do that are in those times where you're in transition mm-hmm. to listen to great podcasts or great audiobooks or 
great YouTube channels and just fill in our mind full of good, positive lessons because if you're filling your mind with positivity, all of a sudden your life starts to represent itself that way. Sometimes Eric will call me like, dude, you have to listen to this podcast. And like, all right, and then I'll listen to it. Then, But all of a sudden when you're speaking and when you're talking and when you're doing things, you're on the same page because you just cons- you just consume the in- same information and you can now talk about it at the same time. So like I really do find that cool about like being like, oh, check this out. This is cool. Mm-hmm. But then you both are sharing that information and, and, and analyzing it. Too. It's like a book club. <laughs> yeah, it is a book club. Well, and I hope people will do the same with this podcast, Absolutely. right? <laughs> I would um, love to have you guys tell me how um, listeners can follow you guys on your social media and on your website. Absolutely. So our website is www www.budobrothers.com B-U-D-O brothers.com All our social handles are usually at Budo Brothers on Instagram, Facebook, you can find us on uh, just Budo Brothers by searching Budo Brothers, YouTube same thing, and real de- easy and definitely if you want to get a really in-depth look of what's going on in our lives and what we do subscribe to the magazine, you can do that on our website, it's really a good snapshot of what we're always up to and uh, yeah, yeah, fabulous <laughs> Okay, great. I will for sure post um, links to all that too on our blog post with along with this podcast. You were going to say something. No, I was just going to say we've uh, we're launching a new initiative called BBTV Budo Brothers TV, where we just push record. We're just recording the struggles, uh, the ups, the downs, and putting it all out there. And when we go on a trip, we're recording everything, and it's all going to be on YouTube. So stay tuned for that. Oh, fantastic! That's great. Well, thanks, you guys, so much for coming on the show. I'm glad that we were finally able to connect. This is great. Awesome. Thank you so much for having us. And by the way, we love your products. It's it's so amazing. We got to try the Jow, Jow and it was just fantastic. The bruised juice. The bruised juice, juice is really good, Yes, too. absolutely. We get smashed up a lot. I mean, obviously, when we're out training and filming, we're always trying to sneak in some training. And a lot of the times, you, you do get, you get bruised, you get banged up. And uh, actually, it was funny. We were on set filming uh, one of our digital seminars uh, with actually Tom Voss. And Tom Voss is a massive, massive ambassador. He loved, he can't stop talking about you guys. Yeah. For <laughs> training. And, right. uh, I actually had my hands smashed. Kyle and I were practicing some stuff and we really had no idea what we were doing. Yeah, not successfully. So yeah. as you can imagine, we, get, we uh, had a couple misfires and one of those misfires really stopped banged up my hand and we had a crisis because I had to hold this camera for the next two days and I couldn't close my fist, which was a problem. So uh, luckily Tom brought his little vial of bruise juice. He's like, Hey, toss some of this on it. Sure enough. I mean, I was good to go. I mean, 30 minutes, the swelling went down and, uh, I was I was relieved. I was back on the camera rocking and rolling. So that was all I needed to know that it works. Yeah. I love Tom and he's so great. He was on our first podcast, so you guys will have to listen we to that. Let's do it. He's, a chance. he's, he's yeah. a big fan oh, of Tom. Yeah. I know. I so I have four kids and um I seriously carry bruise juice and some of our other liniments wherever I go because I like to be the proud mom to whip it out of my backpack when they get hurt playing soccer or something. Yeah. Super so. mom. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, I try. <laughs> um, anyway, so thanks you guys so much again for coming. And um, we're excited to direct some of our listeners your way. Really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. And thanks to all our listeners for joining us today. For more great tips from the Budo brothers, Eric and Kyle, be sure to visit us at plumdragonherbs.com. We will post show notes and ways to connect with them. And if you like the show, please subscribe to our podcast on YouTube and leave us a comment. Until next time.